Hello and welcome, Jenny. Thank you, Michael. I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm so happy to be here with you as well today. And this is really a special moment for you, right? You haven't been on YouTube for a little while. I've been hiding in my cave for quite a while. <laughs> Um, Good for you. Yeah, I Good for you. That. I mean, it it defines something. I don't know. Like the first thing that I think of when you say that is I think of, because I know for you, you went through a really big period of expansion. And usually like after a period of expansion, we need to have a contraction. People okay. in our society, we like to think of this Jupiterian, oh, it's expansion is greatness. No, when you think about it, you have to inhale as well as exhale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Pluto, I've talked about this on my own channel and everyone who has placements at the end of the cardinal sign, beginning of the fixed signs are all having the same experience. That happens to be my ascendant, my Saturn, my Mercury, and my moon are all getting pummeled. And then we're going to move on to my sun as that's finishing up by Pluto. They're squared or opposed and Mars rules my ascendant and my son at his degree, where the United States Pluto is. I've got all of that. How did my guide say it? Because I have such a, he's at his degree of exaltation. They said that I was getting to the humid side of Mars. And that is fire, just being a little bit more chill. So yeah, I've had just a lot. And Mercury and the moon... And then my ascendant, so it's been my physical body and my children and relationship is a situation. And yeah, it's just a lot. And I needed to, really, I fell down hiking and that was it. Like I have had 29 months of without a day off and I was changing diapers, crying. Like the poor girl, I know she felt terrible because I had to use my hands and I, every day for three days, I cried every time I, it hurt so bad. And I just said, you know what? I'm sitting down. You want me to do something? <laughs> you need to bring me what I need because I, it's too much. It was just, and I don't want to get on YouTube and cry <laughs> about all, you don't want to. Everyone, first of all, even if you don't have placements there and you don't know your chart, everyone is experiencing the end of Pluto and Capricorn. And that's a big, and the end of Uranus and Taurus. That's no small, and they're talking to each other simultaneously. So many people are having towers. I know a lot of my clients, it's like the parents, they're dealing with parents becoming ill or children. I know people who have lost children moves, sudden moves, sudden loss of a job. There's so many big things happening for people. And I didn't feel like I could contribute to their well-being because I just had to contribute to my own for a while. So, so I've important. Been in my cave. What's that? I mean, it's so important. I'm really thankful that you did that because we have such this pressure, I believe, in our society to just go. And yeah. there are times where we really do need to just stop, pull in our energy so and take care of ourselves. And especially for those of us who are light workers, those of us who are here to really do what we're doing, yeah. um, pushing ourselves at such a crazy pace yeah. just is unsustainable. And at a certain point, you have to wonder, like, is this yourself doing this or is this your ego slash personality doing it? Yes. Right. <laughs> Is this your Mars and exaltation and your Saturn in your first house? Or do you really need to? Yeah. But I'll tell you something. When I became an energy healer, I studied a few modalities. So I'm not going to say which modality because we're going to talk about it at a later time. I don't know. Maybe we'll get into that today for us. But yeah. when we do discuss it, I don't want anybody to look back at this video. So I was taught... And I think a lot of us are taught that when we do these healings, we can somehow avoid the actual experience of it. Mm. And what I've found to be true is that we do the healing, it happens anyway, and it's just a more graceful, it's, oh. Now, I, I, when I started this work, 
I had always talked to angels and I guess I just took it for granted, my gifts. I always thought, like I told you, that I, I could always look at two people. I know exactly what's going on in their relationship. I just thought everybody did those things. And when I decided to do this professionally, um, oh no, I just totally lost my train of thought when I said that. Wait, I'm stopping in and being a, a, a light worker. Yeah, I wonder what their... Yeah, when you're there, they want me to point out for other people, especially because of what's happening with Pluto and going Pluto moving into Aquarius is just going to be so many people are going to come online. Yeah. And it is important for people to recognize how psychic and intuitive they are themselves, because you give your power away when you when we're following somebody that says, oh, just mark that complete. That's what I was taught. Like, oh, you just just check off the experience of not ha of being a caregiver full time, and then you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> and then Bailey, I don't know why the timing worked the way it did, but for whatever reason, the man, the money man, the guy with all the money, <laughs> so much money. <laughs> and I always pray that he has more and more money. Because it makes my Abund life. Abundance. Yes. Please give him all the money. I do. I've been manifesting that for him and yeah. his lovely wife, that they can do whatever they want and be happy because that's good for everybody, right? Yeah. Okay. And he pulled the funding. And I hate to say, but the universe uses him in those ways in my life. And he pulled funding for her caregiving right as she finished school. And so <laughs> I was like, you're a full-time caregiver again, more than a full-time caregiver. But yeah, I don't, when you're in it, I've been screaming and crying and threatening. <laughs> but those are the Plutonian things. And then there's this part of yeah. where there finally has to be a surrender because the truth is, and as soon as I say this, this so well, is that the only way out is through. Yeah. Even each of those days when you were changing the diaper and you were in pain, it, it's just this, okay, in this moment, this is what I need to do. This And, and mm -hmm. to be honest, one aspect of it, and it gives me goosebumps to really feel it, is is love. Yes. And a mother's love. And yes. the desire for another human being not to be suffering in any way, shape, yeah. or form. Not sitting in one's right. bodily fluids right. or bodily whatever. And so that it's... And we know that our pain, fortunately, we're conscious enough to know this is going to hurt me for a little bit and it's probably going to make me take longer to heal. Yes. And I don't have any choice. And I love her and what this is what has to be done. There's there's right. really no other choice. And I get to spend every day with a child that she's an angel. She came in crystal. She can't form a malicious thought. She can't. She's just the sweetest, sweetest thing. And I'm blessed. I understand that as well because, and this is important for people, a lot of people subscribe to my channel are special needs parents. And a lot of us are at home and not out. And people just don't see us really and don't have any idea. And now that such a large segment of the population is born with these neurological disorders, we need to be more vocal. But Oh no, now I lost my train of thought again. My and come girl. forward I... out of the shadows and be seen. And yeah. I think it's that unconditional love in a way, what's so beautiful for you, even though there's a hardship to it and sometimes it's really not easy, you're in daily relationship with a, something that's very rare in humanity, which is unconditional love. Yes, <laughs> that's it, that's it. My ex-husband once said, I think Bailey is our easiest child. <laughs> because she doesn't speak and we have three Aquarian children <laughs> and there's Aquarians so we can we can ask questions and do things that are very because we're, we want to understand and, and try and have a system and I always like to say when people have Aquarian planets usually one of the parents when something happened like you get hurt the parent goes oh that's really interesting now go in the bathroom and go into the medicine cabinet where it is get the band-aids and get the iodine and it's not this like a cancer or a piscean mom who would go like oh my poor baby what happened to you oh my right. gosh <laughs> 
with the Clarions, they, I don't know, my kid, I don't know if you had this experience, but my older, my typical children were 11 hmm. when they were like, I don't know what you think you're trying to tell me, but I already got this figured out. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. And I said, I asked the angel, why did I have three Aquarian children? And they said, in order to teach you diplomacy, because I was such a control freak and you can't control them. And I, it really did 24 every time I don't know what your experience was when Uranus and Pluto squared every time because the Saturn was in my seventh at the time so for those of you watching this was 2012 to 2015 it happened seven times and I did not know astrology years before it started I saw I'm walking down a green hilly pasture just minding my business and out of the clear blue sky came seven black tornadoes seven and every time they squared that's uranus and, and pluto the black tornado right, right. every time they squared i lost a relationship wow. and during and the last yeah. two one of my kids moved out and then the next one moved out no warning and i just went into the pit of hell i was mm -hmm. like that was it that was my yeah but that was how i awakened right, right. i wasn't speaking to my family of origin for good reasons. I And I needed to be, like I said, like with what's happening now and for everybody watching, when you're in the storm, when the tornadoes are there and you're like, what the fuck to the universe and having a tantrum, it's just, it's not easy to pull yourself out of it and say, I know this is happening for my benefit. And this is all going to come out the way that it's supposed to come out. But yeah, I wonder what your thoughts are just about worldwide. Because like we were saying in a conversation we had off camera, this election, and this will have to go out now before the election, this election, we're really deciding the future of Europe. Because depending on who gets in, Putin gets Poland right so it's a bigger picture really bigger picture happening now what are your thoughts i'm really i'm troubled overall i would have to say for one thing we have a lot of significant astrological aspects that are occurring in relationship to the u.s's birth chart and including the pluto return and it's bringing about these ideas and understandings and looking at things and how we deal with power over things. And I don't know about you sometimes, but I really feel like sometimes the collective is still in the process of deciding. And, and deciding what does power look like? Is it somebody raging against people who have less, who are in need, people who are different, or is it someone who just quietly has power and is able to conduct themselves in an adult manner and not, you know what I mean? Not use and the opens vision. the door and invites people, all people yes. to the table right. and celebrates the diversity and the beauty of our humanity. And I am the hard part is I'm a sad rising and I'm an Aquarian. So I'm actually fairly much an optimist at heart, but I have a Scorpio moon. So I also know that life can yes, be real that. sometimes. There's just times where life hits you in the belly. I I think it's it's been hard watching what's going on for, for the United States. I was an exchange student to Denmark when I was 16. I've been going many times ever since. I have a strong relationship mm -hmm. with my exchange family there and the culture yeah. there and really appreciate their understanding of what community means and helping yes. people. And because the truth is with winters like that, it's like when you live up in Minneapolis or Chicago, right. like you do, you, if there isn't a community, you don't really survive. You can't survive. Yeah. The winters are just too brutal. Yeah. And, but else, elsewhere on the coast is this idea of this singularity or this thing that our individualness can be very, that can somehow persevere. Even our astrology sometimes gives us this kind of hubris in relationship to the outer planets. But I think to come back to what you were talking about a little bit earlier is we 
I think when we have these outer planet transits is where we have to meet these transcendental powers that yeah. we over which we have no power and over which we have no control. I know right. when I had Pluto over my ascendant is basically what got me into astrology. Really? And yeah, because it was like nothing made sense to me. And That's I one thought of from a was on my mid heaven when I got into astrology. Just yeah. Interesting. So fascinating. Because I think there's a way that it makes whatever it is that it's hitting not ever make sense again. And so for me, I went through several months of, I had just moved to Santa Fe. I didn't, I couldn't find any relationships. I was having a hard time finding work. And so then I thought, oh, I'll get an astrology reading. And then I come to find out, oh, this is about transforming my image of myself. Are you transforming your work, right? Transforming how you do your career and your calling. For me, right. transforming my relationship with my family, transforming pretty much my whole foundational sense of myself. And I really couldn't do that in California. But I think the key words that I've come up with Pluto over the years is one is surrender. And yeah. also basically taking off all my clothes, getting down on my knees and offering saying basically everything that I have is yours, divine spirit, all that is. This is, you're going to take whatever you're going to take. And I have no power over that. So please know that whatever you want, it's much easier to, I, I don't have an idea, but one of my metaphors for Pluto is like holding on, like how we hold on to things, our attachments to things are like holding on to radioactive material. And so when yeah. we're holding on to it, the first thing we Boy, lose yeah. are our fingers. And then yeah. you hold on to it longer and you use your, lose your hands. And then at some point, hopefully your head comes in and says, this is not a winning proposition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I also, I came up with, what did they give me back in those days? I surrendered to the power of my own transformation. Mm. That's just a good mantra to always have because surrendering to your transformations means that you're letting go and that's really the only way we can detach from the illusion and people like us are calmer during election season because we're not so attached to the illusion well and i think you and i have learned over the years the importance of creating energetic and healthy boundaries yeah. Um, like when advertising comes on, when it tries to hook onto us energetically, like saying you, that, I don't know about you, but in my head right away, I say that isn't true for me. I'm always combating those, those control statements that are out there because yeah. I think it's so important. Yeah. And you pick up on that more because of your moon in Scorpio. And my and I have a question for things. you, actually, a client yeah. asked me yesterday, she is recently become enamored with a man who has a Scorpio moon. Now, my answer to her, and you can correct me because I don't know, from what I've seen, it just in personal relationships, I want to say not with clients because I, I don't, I'm not like close enough to a client to say, and I don't remember who of my clients has this. So I just want to make that clear. But I found with personal friends, women with Scorpio moons gravitate to men who have money. And I also found that those women had terrible relationships with their mother. But I find for men that, and I think with men, that might be the Taurus moon, that mm. that's true. I know men with Taurus moon who want a woman to take care of them, but also give them, pay them in some way. And had that, and maybe mommy was too like, oh, you're the greatest little guy with a pee pee. And do you know what I'm saying? But I, I find do that actually. <laughs> <laughs> From personal experience. Just a little. <laughs> I'm talking about the experience, by the way, there. I know. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scorpio really humor crazy. thrown in. Anyway, we <laughs> um, I think what I find primarily anyone with a Scorpio moon, I think Aaron Sullivan kind of said it nicest, is that there are some wombs that are a four-star womb, and there are some wombs that you just can't wait to get out of. So... I think it always is going to indicate. I, on top of it, have a, a Saturn squaring my moon. Right. Where um, is your Saturn? I haven't pulled your chart still. In Pisces. In Pisces. Okay, that's so I just had my Saturn return. Yeah, I'm so thankful. 
one thing that I think is really important to say with that is no matter, I think no matter who my mother was and how she was in relationship to me, I would not have received the nurturing I needed because okay. that was what I needed to experience. That was like the contract. I always, I don't know about you, but I see the chart as our contract, right? That's like the agreement we made about what we're here to experience and go through for yeah, our but John, it, But that's the thing is that it isn't predetermined because every planet, every time there's a transit and planets connect, you could turn that into infinite numbers, happenings, infinite ways that it's, and choices that you make. So it's not- Totally agree with you. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and, I, and, like and I love that you say that because a lot of people, almost alluding to what you said earlier on, is that I think it just is like what people can do with in psychology where they make, you know, what their label is, their diagnosis is being who they are. I've seen and heard people who also do that with their astrological things saying, oh, like someone like with me with a Saturn moon square. Oh, I have a Saturn moon square. So that means I'm never, ever going to get along with my mom and I'm never going to have nurturing. And it's no, that is not what it means at all. It's things your opportunity you to, yourself, I'm right? sorry. I said, it means you nurture yourself. Yeah, that you nurture yourself and that you have to find some sort of a relationship for those two to work. So it's like yeah. healthy boundaries with women, right. working, um, creating foundational relationships with the feminine side, ancient wisdom with it being Saturn and, and Pisces as well. And with Scorpio moon in the 12th house at 29 degrees, and there's yeah. just, there are a lot of different elements to it. So it's where do I want to focus? And I think I even told you the other day, is like that part of my chart, I just go, oh, this is my Saturn moon square. Oh, all I can see is this little itty bit. And then it's going to have to like, and then I step back and I open both my eyes. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, there's so much more to life. So it's yeah. our perspective. Right. You know, it's where are we plugging in at the moment? And I think as an Aquarian, we're really lucky. And other people have air planets that we can have this opportunity. What I say is like to like pop out of our body or gain a 30,000 foot view, especially Aquarius and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm having a feeling <laughs> and jump up into Aquarius? Like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Scorpio moon's going to have the feeling the Aquarius right. sun's going like, ah, <laughs> run away. Yeah. Yeah. Run, yeah. run for your life. Or, or they'll go, wow, that's really interesting. I wonder if I poke you while you're having that feeling, what'll happen. <laughs> that's the sad rising. <laughs> exactly exactly and my mom is is a, a double sag and i also I, i'm not in contact with my natal parents oh. for a number of reasons actually my natal family my yeah. my, my exchange family in denmark actually has really become my step-in family as well that's, as they're mainly in your pictures i noticed yeah, yeah that's very, just... that's so that's the that's almost like the combination of the aquarius sagittarius scorpio moon it's your family is somewhere else and maybe you like me and I, I think a lot of people watching and I didn't believe it when I heard it or maybe you weren't born into the family that you typically travel with and so your family is elsewhere yeah and I had the same experience which was confirmed when my sister passed away and then I had a better understanding and I don't know what purpose it was with you and it could be the sexuality we don't, I don't know. But for me, in the past two generations, there's been a, a teenage boy to one of my grandmothers that had an aneurysm and became incapacitated and they put him somewhere and never really bothered. And then in my generation, um, there was a boy that has obviously a neurological disorder, chromosome issue, and he was treated absolutely horrifically. And so I understand that I came in to take care of Bailey. And now the DNA, that whole mother, neglectful, selfish, not that they all were. I don't want people to, but the correction of how we treat a child who needs us a thousand percent more than the other kids, probably. That's something that's being remedied. Right. Well, and thank you for saying that because I think it's so important. There are two ways. And I mean, I love that you bring up free will because I really think that is so important and it is such a foundational aspect of Western astrology, of course. But there's also the ways in which things are faded. And I think that occurs through two different ways. One is our biology. And the other is through the family lineage of behavior yeah. into which we're raised. Right. And I think through both the biology and our lineage, 
I believe that each of us is here to work on and heal that which came before. Right. Like and in I'm my family, I was the fir- I'm the first son of a first son of a first son of a fir- I don't know how many generations back, and every single one was like an alcoholic. Wow. And every single one was like this stuff. So I'm the first one to be gay, or at least out that I know of. Or, I actually, or, or let people know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The interesting thing is growing up, what I would hear before I came out and before I really understood is my dad's father, who was the oldest, had two brothers and both of them were gay. One of whom oh, okay. committed suicide and another one who wouldn't have anything to do with the family. And I tried to actually contact him because I thought, It'd be really fascinating to see what it was. And he wouldn't, he actually took the envelope upon in which I put my letter and wrote, Michael, it, your questions about my sexuality aren't as important as the health risks that run in our family. Wishing you all the best. And he sent me one Christmas card that no return address or anything, but then and stuck that in back in the envelope that it was like the weirdest thing, but, and I didn't quite understand it. And then now that I'm at my point now where I'm not in contact with my family as I understand, because I think one of the things that gay people get to have that I don't think straight people have the benefit of is the freedom of experiencing life that isn't based on, oh, and now we have kids and, oh, and now we buy a house and, oh, and now we do this. And now, and it's all these, this litany of loops that, that heterosexual people have to jump through. And I have to say it as a gay man, I am so thankful (laughs) to not be jumping through those many hoops. It's such a, because every hoop that you don't jump through is an opportunity for people to have judgment and ridicule because you've been in Christian communities before where there's this, that magnifying glass. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I used to say, I don't know know if I'm going to say this, but I used to say years ago, when Christ does come back, I believe the same people who crucified him the first time are going to crucify him right all over again. (laughs) They just haven't learned. And I'm sorry to say that. And it's Christian followers. It's not, it's not not the Christ conscious, not the love and acceptance. That man was not. It's nothing to do with ever, ever. And those yeah. little voices on the pulpit are not Jesus speaking. <laughs> no. It, yeah, we talked about too people channeling on YouTube, channeling just their subconscious and or whatever attachment they have. <laughs> like on them, it's like what? Yeah. And really that's we're we'll talk, we could talk about this too more next time, but we talked about that Neptune at the end of Pisces getting ready to move into Aries. And that people need to be so careful what kind of nonsense they're putting into their heads. I've spent a lot of time on YouTube these last few months because I'm going to start, I believe, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm going to start doing tarot on TikTok. I think they've convinced me. Maybe for my birthday, maybe this weekend, yeah. The, the, the draw is that I don't have to get all ready and set the can. I could just... My hands are fine. You know what I mean? Worst case scenario, you, you do it for a couple of months and you go, hey, this isn't my cup of tea. And you say no more. They keep sending me offers. Yeah. So why not? Oh, so, yeah. That's the, that's the universe, right? That's beautiful. Congratulations. And my that Aquarian really... children, my Aquarian children were, of course, telling me long before that to get on TikTok. I was like, no, I don't want the whole China thing. But I'm like, it's fun, but it's a very, I'm oh, sorry. It's a very different, it's a very different community. It's a very young, high information, quick delivery, sometimes entertaining. I got to do a really fun video. I got, yeah, me too, actually. I got to do a fun video on where I went and did all the 12 Zodiac using their different filters. And that was just a hoot and then stitched them all together. So there's some really, I think, fun and entertaining things you can do. You you can maybe even turn on a filter where there's snowflakes coming down or crisp like lights and stars are coming down. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even like that. I just, I'm still trying to come up with the name. I think I've, I think I've got it, but I've been Are you thinking of doing a tarot on YouTube too or no? I'm, de- yeah, I'm debating, I need to do something different. That's for sure. Something needs to switch up. And yeah, I had a dream, I don't know, two, three years ago, I was with my personals, like my team, my angels that are always with me. 
And we were all just sitting around and I said to one of them, I think I want to do something other than astrology. And I woke up and I was like, what, what? Or I think I, I don't remember. It was something like, I didn't want to do that anymore. Or so I don't know. I don't, I really, my, my progressive ascendant is cancer. And I keep saying to them, I'm supposed to be in the cocoon in the cave. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be out there. And they're like, no. You clearly have been in the cocoon. Be <laughs> <laughs> it's more comfortable there. Yeah, but I found a, a snail shell actually, or what do they call those in the garden? And I had it sitting up above my sink and it fell into the garbage disposal and it almost completely, <laughs> come out of your shell, come out. <laughs> That's it's a really good point that you bring up because I think sometimes, especially when we've gone through, I know you went through an incredible expansion period. You were incredibly busy. You were doing a lot of online. Your audience just exploded like crazy. And then it, then just to take the time and be able to slow it all down because all that yeah. is this, all those are frequencies. All of those are energies, people interacting with you. It takes an amazing amount of presence to be in relationship to all that plus taking care of Bailey, plus taking care of your home, taking care of yourself and bless you yeah. for, that's quite an amazing commitment. And so- Well, that was actually, that was my big lesson really in all of this that I'm gonna share with you and everyone else who does this work. When you are doing anything with, where you're connecting with energy in a healing capacity, whether or not that moving, taking people into the Akashic or- looking at their deep, dark, subconscious fears and sadness, that sort of thing, you have to spend equal amount of time on yourself. And what I found to be true is that those of us who don't either gain a lot of weight, which is really common, I found with energy healing, or they have migraines, somebody who has terrible, what am I trying to say? Did Not dizziness, but but what do they call it when vertigo it's... yes yeah i don't know if you but i know we both know an astrologer i'm not going to say but they are so overloaded but their health is so affected and i've actually said that to her when we were on the phone together once but for everybody who is in this field with neptune coming to the end of pisces it's so important to put yourself first because just like me you may end up in a cave. Yeah. For a well, it's, we have to, to remember like when we get on the plane and when they say that if you if they experience a change in pressure, the little cup's going to come down. And whoever you're traveling with, it, put it yourself, put it on yourself first. That first and foremost is actually how we all need to approach life. Yeah. We need to, and the other thing I would say to that is, and I think you're alluding to it, is there needs to be a win situation. So yeah. whatever, some sort of an exchange of energy so that, so a lot of people, and I know, and what what is so hard and challenging for me with astrology is there's so much about this work that, that is free that we all just give away. And it's a little more sometimes than it's actually sustainable. And it's challenging because it's important that we get readings and we get supported in that sort of a way, but there's just that expectation for it. And so stepping into this place of understanding and appreciating and acknowledging what is needed and working with that rather than um, expecting that things need to just be handed to and given to them is, is a big shift in energy. Yeah. Yeah. I also made the mistake. I don't know if you, you did this, but I did a lot of free work and that tears you down so fast. Well, that's the same thing. So there needs to be like some sort of energetic exchange. So that I don't need to pay you or they need to say, Hey, for this reading that you're doing for me or the session, I'm going to do this for you, but there needs right. to be something conscious something. about it because otherwise the other thing is that people unsolicited advice never goes anywhere. <laughs> And so you're actually, the only experience you're getting is learning the lesson that you need to charge. Because <laughs> unless true. someone pays you for what it is that you're giving to them, they're not going to value what they're, you're giving no, to them. No, they don't value it. That's the issue. Yeah, yeah. I, I sometimes did recommend where people would just recommend me on Facebook. I didn't find that to be helpful. But even with my kids' friends, I would say, bring me a flower. 
like something. I don't care what it is. That's but beautiful. Like, that's real. That's an exchange. It really yeah. isn't for a child or a kid. That is, that's a beautiful aspect for us. So I think it's really important. And, and that might be part of what, why you needed to go into the cave for a while is for you to step into this new place where you are respecting and honoring what it is that you are, what you are worth. Yeah. As well as creating the healthy boundaries of having a waiting list. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I booked, I booked nine months out when I made the end of corruption and then people would be desperate for help and I would squeeze them in. And there were days at the time I had someone living here taking care of her. There were so many days I didn't even see her. I was just, and I loved it. I did right. love. And so because I loved it and I was getting so much out of it. I didn't go hiking or riding a bike or anything else. I just worked because a I psychic liked told me something a long time ago when I was a teenager that really helped me a lot. And she said, when you go to do your work, it's really important for you to set the boundaries of what the time that you're working. And this is, I don't know about if this is an experience for you. I'm sure you're going to giggle about it when I say how it is, but this is also for people out there as you're setting up your own practices and you're working with people. So you say, Hey, like I, I want to work uh, Monday through or Tuesday through Sunday. And these are the hours I want to work. And then someone contacts you and they say, the only day I'm available is Monday. Right. So one day you have off and you're, it's the very beginning of your practice. And this is the other thing about it. And you're like, and you think, oh, it's the only person. And I guess I can really squeeze that person in or change my thing. Right. And you go and do that. And I swear to God, 99% of the time, you will go through 17 different appointment changes, numerous other things that come up and that person will never even see you. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's true. I, I had the same thing when I was teaching a class, I limit, I'm careful with, I just ask how many people, because you're holding all of their, their vibration. And yep. it was a kind of, it was pretty intense because it was martyrdom, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about when we do that other and martyrdom covers that's boundaries. That's it's, there's so many things that go under that, that people don't really put together, but we were removing stories from the DNA. And so I'm pulling all of that energy and I had capped it. It sold out in 14 hours. And then people were like, oh, please. And a lot of those people didn't pay. And while I was teaching, I got hit. It was Valentine's day and I was down for eight days. Um, so sick as a dog had a fever. I was so sick. And, but you know what? I, I learned. <laughs> you do. And that's the valuable part about it is like when you look at it, at first you go like, oh my God, this is really horrible or it cost this or it did this to me. But then when you realize like, I'm glad I learned it then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because the longer you wait to learn those lessons, the more sick you'll be. Like when you said people who have those chronic physical things, I know people who look almost like walking cadavers because mm -hmm. they can't receive. People oh, need to yeah. understand receiving is an important aspect. If you want to experience, if you really want to experience, prosperity yeah. has to be flowing. And so in order to do that, means that you also need to receive prosperity right. from other people. It's not just like, oh no, I can't possibly know. Yeah, receive it. Someone's offering something to you. Yeah. If it's a compliment. Like you said, if it's a flower, thank you. Yeah. That's the right response. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so many people, that's part of that martyrdom too, that compliment, oh, we need to say something self-deprecating. No, we're learning. We're all evolving yeah. and learning and receiving compliments is a good way to start receiving money. Yeah. yeah that That's very true. They, they do go hand in hand. Also, emotional stability mm. is huge with financial stability. If we're always in a tither and there's this drama we're involved in and this drama and this, then chances are we probably don't have that bedrock foundation of good financial uh, stability and flow. Right. Do you find that what's... too? Yeah. And then also because it, 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 then it feeds in so easily into like how our society is like how we reward ourselves. We've like for you say, having gone through such a stressful time, Oh, I'm going to reward myself with X, Y, and Z and thinking that buying these objects is going to give some sort of a sense of peace or security rather than going, wow, why is it that I feel like I need to work like this? Why, right. you know, why am I working myself to get sick? Why do I have to get sick for me yeah. to stop? Yeah. 
Or why do I have to fall downhill into the creek? <laughs> it was so, I'm choleric. So whenever I go into shock like that, and, you know, I've only, that's only the second time that I've fallen in the woods. But the first time I fell, I was like, I'll just hike this way. And I was like dragging my leg with me, like, what? The car was right there. No, I'm going on a hike. So this time, as soon, you know, like, as soon as I fell, I heard it, nothing's broken. I heard that and I saw two things tear. And it was like, what's it called? It's also interesting that my son, oh no, I hope I don't get it wrong. My son was a defensive lineman. Oh, wow. Possibly. But they they get the injuries Defensive where, lineback. Okay, that's Is that it. it in football. That's probably it. And I have to admit, I'm not a football person, so I know, I know. That's why I was like, I can't ask him. But my, it's where your hand goes so far back that when you get it overextended, I guess, yeah. yeah. So I saw like the two chairs, but immediately I stood up and I was like, I could walk this way and go. And then I was like, No, come back. <laughs> go back you reel car. that yeah. in. <laughs> it's getting to the humid side of Mars. So that's where I need to be. <laughs> I'm being, in, there's nothing like a fall to put us into our bodies. I yeah, mean, quite literally, true. it's very, it's something that really, in fact, I even think about that for people whenever we get into these states where we get a little overwhelmed, um, yeah. especially with these times that are going on and we're feeling bombarded by stuff. I, I, I part of the work that I do in, with core energetics is comes from this idea of grounding and feeling connected with the earth. And so I just tell people, start wiggling your toes. Think of that energetic cord that goes from the, your tailbone down your legs yes. and down into the earth. And remember yeah. that. And because it literally is this thing where, you know, if, when lightning strikes, because <laughs> right. I don't think anymore for any of us. And if there's just so much about how life is coming at us, is that right. when lightning strikes, we'll be in a little bit more of a grounded space to be able yeah. to, to, to withstand whatever it is and to allow the energy to flow through us. Yes. And that's a, a really good point that you brought up because Neptune at the end of Pisces, I that's the feet. And one of the things, and it's very ungrounded, a lot of times when I'm just walking around, especially when I'm having a busy day or I'm doing two things at once, which typically with the, when you're working and you have a, someone who is completely dependent, you are always doing two things at once. I say, I dwell in the bottoms of my feet. And feel your energy as you say that. You can feel your energy flow down to the bottoms of your feet. And then you're like, the relief comes. If you can just take a moment. And, it really does. Know. Yeah. And, like and then it's, it's not, it, it's then the nice thing is your body and your intentions are working together. Your, whatever, yeah. your, your intentions are grounded. Your ability, and you'll also not feel so tired because... It's like when you think about an electric appliance, right? Without that ground, like anyone who comes in contact with it is going to get shocked, basically. Yeah. So when we are operating, like that's where all of this react. That's why there's so much reactivity in the world. Yeah. One that's half. also when it's Pluto. Yeah, that you're, yeah. that's not. And that's going to be, in my opinion, I think that's going to be enforced until he basically, what do you say? I don't know. I feel like we've got a good four months of that, like that. Yeah. Because there, Pluto is just, he's got such a wide, I don't think traditionally we're giving him, most people don't give him as much, as many degrees as he, like when you're reading it intuitively and energetically, he is the god of energy. Mars and Pluto are the, the seed exploding. They rule energy. That's why I do energy work. So I have that trine. And I just, I totally forgot my point again. <laughs> which you keep talking about neptune so it makes it a point of it but oh I, yeah I, one thing i've been wanting to say oh, did, did you remember no i oh. just forgot to sit again oh if you do maybe that I you, told, did you, i tell you, you that i didn't sleep much last night oh yeah, yeah you did yeah, the new moon is on my yeah. son yeah. and i don't even know what time i fell asleep and then yeah i was up pretty so early information so, just kind of going through i apologize well, I mean, the interesting before. thing with neptune the last time that neptune was at this point which also, to be honest, you've been talking about a lot about Uranus and Pluto, but Neptune's also at the end point of Pisces, which yeah. it rules. And so yeah. I think when Pluto and Gemini, when Pluto moves into Aries, when you, as Uranus is in Gemini, that's going to really create a big, actually a lot of intense stuff. But 
when Neptune moves into Aries, yeah. I'm sorry, when Aquarius moves into Aquarius, I mean, sorry, when Pluto moved into Aquarius, I'll cl clarify that one. But when Neptune moves in Aries, the last time it did that was when we had the Civil War. Yeah. One day after the Civil War was, right. when Fort Sumter was right. attacked. But also there were other things that were not, I don't want people to, I think we're in a Civil War now. It's just energetic, right? Like we're totally. already I agree. Split I agree. But when you down. think about it, because I think of when you think about Neptune in the old days, I keep thinking nowadays we think of Neptune as a spiritual, creative aspect in our chart. But back in the day, Neptune was just as brutal as Pluto. He was it was a very vengeful god. I did not and, know that. Yeah. And so he would require sacrifices and would oh. do vengeance and do all these other things. And so people like to think of this really easy part of Neptune. But I think Neptune is this, uh, especially when it gets into Aries, is this spiritual warrior. Yeah. Right? And also, and I think because of that, and then with Pluto in Aquarius and with Uranus in Gemini, is this ideology with all those outer planets in these signs of ideologies. That's, I think, going to be really scary for manipulating and getting people to think. And, yeah, ways. for people that are, yes, for people that can't, are not, haven't yet come to the realization that they're their own guru. I once met, and I'm not, I, she, I got a lot of things from her that were very positive, but I also saw people just following this person who said things that were not true. A lot of times would just, or got up in front of everyone and said, my modality is the best modality. And all these other modalities suck. Like always source, whatever you want to, however you want to name that it's always the healer first of all don't care what you call it you can't trademark source and it just I would listen to these people like I was like why do you guys you like why are you talking about what classes you did and this certification and that really it's like evangelicalism has somehow bled into spirituality and how can it not when so many of us come from those the backgrounds right that's going to be like the seeding I don't know, it for me <laughs> yeah. I was just watching something very intriguing the other day on, I think it was on Instagram where a woman was talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And the fact is that he actually had visited the Blackfoot Indian tribe and was working with them and that they actually come from the standpoint that from the beginning, we are all created equal. Yeah. You know, this whole our American, white American or puritanical evangelical viewpoint of this thing that we have to earn our right, that we have to do these yeah. things is so against so many viewpoints. The Vedic, the Sufi viewpoint is that the, you're, that the blessings are given to you at your birth. You just need to allow and welcome them. Oh, that's so interesting that you say that because I literally heard a tarot reader say the exact same thing this morning. That oh, this is funny. something that you're, you're born, I just heard you're born into grace and you're through grace you receive and there isn't any such thing as deserving and I don't care what your ancestors believe 4,000 right. years ago, yeah. it's right. really what you put into action. You can remove the past and change your subconscious for all day long. Yep. This is what you do. It's what you're putting That's why some of us are here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. To help other people and, as well. and we shift yeah. programs by putting something else into practice. It's really, yeah. I do think, of course, I do energy healing. So obviously I know that it has value, but it, it doesn't. I know people who are healers who do healings for their diabetes over and over again, and then eat four cupcakes when it comes time for lunch break. you got to put that <laughs> healing into practice or it's just not going to take, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or it's just going to take a lot, a lot longer. Lot, lot. What's that? <laughs> or it's going to take a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like because it's funny because it's I came up with this idea a while ago is the idea of grounding the woo. This the thing is with woo, and even we think about with astrology or mediumship or channeling as being woo-woo, but 
it's woo woo as long as it's unrelatable to our daily lives and the ways of improving it and our understanding of ourselves and others. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. how I look at it. As, as long as it, when it's irrelevant, I don't know about you, but some of my earliest books that I read on spirituality were the Seth teachings and they were just, they resonated with me, which has basically become one of my foundational aspects, which is that we all know what truth is. It has a vibration and a frequency. And when we begin yeah. to know what that is and feel it, we follow it. And so you can sit there and listen to a guru a supposed guru, get some value out of it. And then also go, oh, and now they've moved into bullshit territory. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was why I blew up on YouTube. I, well, this person said this archangel came and told me to ask me to share your work. And yeah, I didn't end up a couple of years later, I, but it was good. It helped me. It was beneficial. And a lot of people that I'm very close to came through her and I'm grateful because, of course, the algorithm picked up that I had so many new subscribers at once. So I was put out more. And that that was Uranus going over my ascendant. There you go. Yeah, Big coming so, out party. Yeah. But then I heard David Palmer say, takes you way up high and then he slams you back down. And sure enough, but that's OK, because I needed to learn. I needed to learn balance and I just heard distribution of power. It's like what you were saying. And that's really what we give our time and energy to. That's where we're, that's what the power, that's where the power is, right? Like that we're putting all of our, us into that. And yeah, I was just giving it away. Yeah. Where so. we focus and where we, and what we say, the story we tell ourselves becomes real. Yeah. And so in those ways of which that we don't acknowledge or live up to what we really know we need to, then there's a certain instability in the frequency. It's like how I feel it. It's almost like when you get that one tire, that's a little bit out of alignment, or it just does that yeah. little shake. You're like, yeah, I need to get, I need to address yeah. that. I need to make a little, and that is what it is. And I think that's, what's really nice about doing the healing work that you do. And I know the healing work that I do through my astrology and through the core work is that it, it's about it's basically this fine tuning, like whether you think of a guitar or a piano, it's just tuning, getting you like to whatever your proper frequency is in all these little yeah. different levels so that you learn your appropriate hum. I don't know about for you. I'm sad rising. It's my only fire. I'm almost all earth and water, but I've got a mutable cross for my angles and I just, I can go like an ever ready bunny. I have a grand wow. on earth. I really, and I'm beginning to slow down enough now at 59 that I'm starting to feel where that generator starts to wind up and I can actually go, oh, let's back that back down. And sometimes yeah, even you, you could literally be fixing people you could be handling people's issues and fixing things. That must have been just the natural way for you to go, I would think, for until you learned to to pull your to reel it that back in. So sometimes yeah, I think what I was starting to hear you say was helping people healing things a little bit before they need, or their thing was for me that I'm really big at is I know what people need before they often do. And I'm sure you're that same way. And so it's really easy to go in and help and go, Oh, do this. And you think, Oh, I'm helping this person. No, you're enabling that person to not yeah. ask for help for themselves, right. which right. I know I have a problem asking for help. I think there are other people in the room that might have that same issue sometimes too, but I'm not going to mention any names. Okay. <laughs> But it is hard as a caregiver, because I think we do get this thing, caregivers as well as healers, as well as older souls, there's this wealth and bounty of energy to which we know we have access that is boundless. And then there are the parts in which we turn the faucet down a little too much and we restrict it. And it's learning how to regulate all those different flows in a way that make our own individual systems work. Yes. Yes. We didn't discuss this before. But just so everyone knows, it's Halloween today, and I have left Miss Bailey at an activity, and I need to now pick her up and escort her to her Halloween party oh, beautiful. Um, this evening. Yeah, she Yay. has a very cute little, she's got a Leo moon too, so oh. she's got a cute little Target Halloween dress that's, it's just those fancy ones that they do at Target that are so cute. Um, yeah, she's too, she's over the costume. So we just do the fancy dresses 
Beautiful. for holidays. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, many I'm blessings. Have a so I want to wish you a happy Halloween for you, you and Bailey. That's really fantastic. And everyone out there, be safe. Have a wonderful time. Allow the beautiful, expressive, scorpionic energies to enthrall and excite. And the veil and is not- so thin. The veil, and we have a fabulous new moon for it. And yeah, Jupiter and Mercury are about to be in mutual reception. And yeah, life so is fun. good. How do people find you, Jenny? Do you have a website? Do you do people um, find you on YouTube? Yeah, Jen, Astrology for Ascension is the website. Beautiful. And what about you, Michael? And for me, um, Michael Bartlett at coremichael.com is, web, is my website. And my email is michael at coremichael.com. Thank you so much, Jenny. So it's a treasure talking to you today. Yeah, so good to talk to you too, Michael. More unfolding. (laughs) 